Hi guys, Keith Darkberg Farms. It is now the first week of January. It's actually starting to warm up a little bit out here. Um, not super warm, maybe 30 or 40s. But hey, today got my new uh, torsion weeder from Neversink. We're gonna head in and give it a little test and see how well this thing works. I'm super excited about it, so let me show you. And stick around for the end of the video where I show you a simple, easy modification to get two tools out of one. Also, as a reminder, Every third Thursday of the month, we do a live Q&A to answer all your questions and talk about what's going on on the farm. That's the third Thursday every month at 5 p.m. Central Time. Also, don't forget to go over to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. Got a bunch of cool spreadsheets down there. Then finally, we are booking Mother Earth News Fairs this year. I'm going to be at all four of them. We're going to be doing Texas, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Lawrence, Kansas. While I'm there, I'm going to be setting up some console times to set up an hour to go over whatever you'd like to discuss on your farm. Um, I will be getting ready to start booking those. They'll be on the website as well. So hope to see you all there and uh, help everybody out as much as possible. So, for anyone that has not seen these NeverSync products, um, it's called a Mutineer or something. I don't know. It's strange. But what it is basically is a quick release like you find on a drill. And it's pretty simple. It's got the little collet, and then it's got a quick release chuck on it. You load them in, pull back, it clicks into place. Makes it really easy for switching your tools out, which is great if you have a bunch of these. I am specifically using these for these two torsion weeders. Um, I actually got these for Christmas, and yes, I do get stuff like this for Christmas, believe it or not. People do like to buy me this kind of stuff, and I do enjoy getting it. Um, but I would not buy it for any of the wire weeders because they're so cheap and easy to make. These are a little bit more complex because they're actually spring-loaded. So as you go around your products, your crops, it'll actually flex around things. I'm not sure how much I need to maybe bend them in or bend them out. Like this one's super springy, be great for really fresh uh, direct seed stuff. This would be better for a transplant that's starting to grow or direct seed stuff that's gotten bigger. I've found two uses for this so far on the existing crop I have over here, which I'll show you. And then also another use down there on the direct seeded lettuce. And then we're going to go over to these carrots and give it a try. But more than anything, this, this is specifically why I got it. Um, buy your own stick, I think is something ridiculous, like $50 to have a stick shipped, which I think is just plain stupid. Go to a hardware store, anywhere else, you can get these for, I don't know, 20 bucks at the most, or an old handle like I used. One simple screw hooks it to there. Again, you can get these, these through Neversync. They did not sponsor this, I actually got these. But I think they're gonna be a really, really good tactic for weeding in, not within row, in between rows on the farm. Um, it will take a two-step process because these are specifically for going around the crop, which I'll show you, but you also have to do something in the swath in between. That's why they sell the uh, like seven or I don't even know how many, multiple other sizes of the wire weeder, which is basically just that right there. Which would be really cool is if I bent those tongs and actually hooked that together and then I got a wire weeder and then I got a torsion hoe. Either way, we're not going to work on that now. I'm going to take it over to the bed and uh, kind of show you what it does. So it's going to be a little difficult to show you just one-handed. But what it's designed to do is to literally sweep around your crop and weed on both sides of it. So see, I'm starting to get some stuff pulled up. Some other stuff dropped off. But it works really good for that. I'll turn it around and do another run. So again, you just keep it up at an angle and just pull it along. I did find you have to be kind of careful not to go too deep, especially with this stuff because it'll actually want to pull the heads out, which these all did pretty good. So it does really good right up next to the plants here. This is well cultivated. 
I mean, there's some little stuff still holding on, but that'll get taken care of by the second part of the process, which is the good old fashioned stirrup hoe. So these are actually spaced just perfectly apart to where I can just make one swipe through here and I get the stuff in between the rows. So this does basically right here. And then this does right up next to the plants. So see how they're actually overlapping? Oop, don't want to get too much on it. But if I'm right on top of each other, both those swipes overlapping and then over here, same thing, they're overlapping. Didn't get as much with this one as I did with this one. And that's really what I was talking about, this being a two-step process. I have my crop spaced specifically for a stirrup hoe. Um, this looks like this is a six or eight incher. Not super big, but it fits in between them perfectly. And then this comes back right on the edges of the crops and gets the rest of the band. So there is an overlap by about, looks like about half the tine right here. So I am getting overlap in between the two. What would be really cool is if there was something where there were two of these or three of these and two of these even if it was just a wire weeder all on one tool that I could pull through on my bed. I know that would require very precise um, planting out but what it would also do is these are springy enough to where you wouldn't have to worry too much about going through and wrecking your crops. So we'll head down here where it's a little thicker and we'll do a couple more runs and kind of show you befores and afters. come back with the torsion hoe. And these heads are almost too big to go over with this. So that did a pretty good job. I mean, even this stuff here, that's been pulled up. It's dead. That's dead. All of that's dead. Pretty much everything. The one thing it does not get and it cannot get with a single pass is the stuff that's in between within the row. And that's because it's not designed to really clip in between the row. Or within the row. It's mainly made to get between the rows. Because there's a, it's a decent amount, but all in one spot. But in between, it does a pretty good job at cleaning things up. So here is an unexpected use I found for it. Typically when you pull it through, you're supposed to leave the tines upwards so they don't dig down deep. But I found if you turn it over and put the tines down and go in between rows, it's actually really good at pulling out all the excess crud left in between cuts of your leaf lettuce. I mean, that's pretty quick and pretty easy and just that little bit, I mean, I've got a good handful of stuff. And now we can get much more airflow in between just by simply passing it through. But it will not work like this onto them. They just, it eats the heck out of them and just tears them to pieces. So at least on leaf lettuce, that's a very good thing I found out. And it really just opens things up dramatically. It's amazing how much it actually removes so it also does a fairly decent job on carrots the main trick is see i'm holding this with one hand so it makes it a little bit more difficult is i've got to keep it more upright so not to tear the plants up too badly and lay them over again just like the other process it is a two-step process this was second, the stirrup hoe in between the rows was first. Actually pull that through and do another cultivating. 
They work a lot better on shorter carrots. These are about as high as it really gets because then they really start laying over real bad. But really quick, works pretty darn good to be honest with you. I'm really happy with it. Now I just want to let everybody know I opened up the uh, membership portion of the YouTube channel. So you can go through there, help support the farm, help support what we do. Um, get to test out more cool tools like this from any money that comes in from it. But I wanted to show you this real quick little trick with this. You can see how I kind of hinted towards it towards the beginning. I bent one tine down, one tined up, and now I can lock them together. So now I have a wire weeder like this and one that kind of digs in when I pull it the other direction and pulls the stuff really deep seated in between the rows. Pretty cool. It locks really good. Um, it could use a little bit of tweaking, maybe more back. I don't know. I really don't want to mess with it too much because I have really loose soil here. So it's really hard to tell how it's going to actually act in like the deep, heavy soil out in the field when it's wet. But I mean, I did have it pop once or twice, but it's pretty darn sturdy. And then you go in between the rows. So like I said, um, anybody that's got any tools out there they like to be tested or know anybody that's got tools that they want to be tested, let me know. Um, if you can send them my way, that'd be even better, but I'm not opposed to actually purchasing them to try them out on the farm. You know, I love having new tools, especially ones that work. And I do believe this will be a really good one for a lot of my direct seeded stuff, my radishes and my carrots and beets and things that just really get overwhelmed by the grass. Like with any weeding tool, the real trick is going to be keeping on top of it and actually doing it on a regular basis. So that being said, that's what it is. So hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.